everybody, and welcome to Wizard Racing. I'm going to do a video today on how to use GIMP. And this will be kind of an intro video, just kind of starters for people. Um, this is going to be just an easy learning. Hopefully, hopefully keep this down to about 30 minutes so you don't spend your entire day learning the basics. And then the next video, we'll jump into painting your first car. Uh, but I wanted to start off with some basics. Uh, and this is GIMP. Uh, GIMP is an image manipulation program. It is uh, freeware, so you can download it without paying exorbitant costs for a video editor or a graphics editor. And this is what I recommend using. Uh, it's also a program I've been using for only about a month, so expert I am not. So I'm going to make these videos for basic understanding on how to use them to make and paint a car for iRacing. That's the purpose here. We're not going to become graphic artists. No one from this video is going to be an expert at anything. But you'll have a nice car, hopefully, and uh, easy to do with the basic patterns um, and things that iRacing already gives you. So we're going to start off with... Uh, GIMP beginner uh, video number one. So first off, I wanted to talk about the toolbox. This up here in the top left corner of your screen on the default opening of the screen in GIMP is your toolbox. Your toolbox houses all the different tools, the move tools, selection tools. Um, you've got fill tools, paint tools, um, all these different kinds of tools, and we'll go through quite a few of those here in a little bit. But first off, this little box right here is not always easy to see and easy to find everything. Um, so first I wanted to start by going to Edit and Preferences. And in your toolbox preferences, you'll notice quite a few options. Um, so we want to talk about icons. Okay, so if we move this over just a little bit, you can see down here at the bottom, Icon Size and icon themes. Now you can pick, use the size from the theme. I like to use, and then there's guess. Hmm, not my favorite. I like to use custom icon size. So if you want it really small on your screen, you can see how they're a lot smaller up here in the corner now. Or if you have a big screen and you want to be able to see these suckers, crank them right up. But that takes up the whole side of my screen, so it doesn't work so well for me. Um, I like using the medium size. It also gives me room to use my tool options down here in the bottom section of this um, anchored space on my screen. So really important that you go through and make this work for you. Um, toolbox is what this is called. So in the preferences of the toolbox, you can use tool groups. Now you notice my tools are a lot smaller now. Uh, I do not like using tool groups. Tool groups are ways that the application groups the tools together, so different selection tools might be together, different painting tools might be together, drawing tools, fill tools might be in a group. Um, I like seeing all my tools. Uh, I like them all up there so I can just go find the one I want. I know what the icons look like, so I go and I grab them and I go. Um, another thing about this, I don't know how to use every single tool up here, so I'm not going to teach you how to use all the tools. I'm going to use teach you how to use the ones I use to make cars and iRacing. Um, so toolbox, uh, you can pick what you want to see, what you don't want to see. Um, you can you know, decide that you don't want that particular tool or that you do, and it'll obviously change it up here on your screen. Um, so let's see, tool groups, talked about those. Tool options. Okay, I don't want to change any of mine. So the other thing is this button down, this section down here, this tool options section. Okay, this is, this, uh, this area will change depending on which tool you're using. Let's go ahead and start with, uh, we'll just create a new file, um, default size, just gives us a white file. Let's uh, kill that white so we're not blinding ourselves here. Um, but I used the fill bucket to do that. The fill bucket is just one of the tools. It looks like a bucket of paint. Um, and the fill bucket has a few options. Not a million options, but it has a few options. Um, you can fill with the foreground color, which is this primary color right here. You can fill with the background color, or you can fill with a pattern. Now, over here on your right-hand side are your patterns. 
Um, and there's lots of different tools over here on this side as well. You got your text tool, your pattern tool, and your um, paintbrush tool. Um, I usually keep it on patterns, so if I want to use one, they're right there for me. But quick, easy switch over here of the patterns um, of the option, and you can pick different places to see what you can see on that top left, top right. Okay, so if we're going to fill with a foreground color, we just pick that foreground color fill, we pick a color, we pick the tool, we click the box, and it fills it up. Um, so if we wanted to pick, like, let's say we're going to go to blue. Pick a blue, your favorite blue, a purple, whatever you want. And if your tool is selected for fill bucket, you click on it, and it fills it up. Now, we'll get through ways of, that this will be different as we go here, but I just wanted to show you this tool options item down here at the bottom. Now, every once in a while, people lose this tool options, okay? It's an anchored item, all right? So it can go away. Now you can't put it back. So you're really frustrated, and you have to go out online to find one of these cool YouTube videos to figure out that you can go tools, dockable, tool options, and then put them where you want. Okay, I put it over here in these options for me. I didn't want it over there, so I just dragged it over where I want. These are just your tools that you're using. You can put them wherever you want. I use them how you want. Um, but I like the tool options anchored um, because then they're, they're always there for me and I can use them. If you like a bigger workspace and you want this screen area bigger, you can move these. You can make them bigger, smaller. You can do whatever you want. Um, pretty customizable on um, on the GIMP options. Okay, all right, so that's enough about tools. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about is files. If we're going to start working with files and, and start using and editing different uh, paints, then we need to know how to find things. So I use an organized file structure um, for myself, okay? And I think it's really important to find your own. You can do it however you want, but this is how I do mine. Um, I use my thumb drive, my USB drive, to store all my current documents, and then I back them up online so I don't lose any of them. If you notice in here, um, I've got logos, patterns, tracks, um, vehicle pictures, vehicles, and then video editing, which is... Um, what I'm doing right now. So uh, you'll see, like, if I go into logos, these are all organized by the different types of logos. Like, um, I'm a Royals fan, so there's all my Kansas City Royals logos. And you'll notice on some of them you can't even see them, but if you highlight over that, you can barely see that's actually white text on a clear background. Um, and I'll go through some logos here in a minute. That's one of the things I want to talk about today. Um, but get organized. Get your... Um, Get things kind of uh, set up for yourself so you can use them. Okay. Now, with your files, remember that GIMP, being a photo editor, will loves photos. So if you want to take a file, let's go to um, one of my favorite near and dear to my heart topics here, uh, which would be the NSRA. And we'll grab... Uh, Let's just grab the NSRA logo. And what you can do, look, you can drop it right on the screen. Boom, there it is. Um, my blue background that I put in there a few minutes ago is still there. The NSRA logo is on top of it. And if you look over here on the side, you'll see that there are layers. These are called layers, each one of these lines. So you'll hear a lot about layers. We're going to go over some basic layers at the end of the video. Um, but uh, for now, just know that these are the layers. The background layer um, on your cars is going to be base layers, um, lots of different layers for, for different things. And what's great about them, you can turn them on and off. So if I don't want to see my background and I just want to see what I down, what I opened, I can turn off that background. Okay. Um, let's see. We're going to go through some of these tools. Um, but first, you'll notice this doesn't fit in the window. So let's go to View, Zoom and fit in the window. you also notice that the NSRA logo is bigger than the window. 
So let's start with the first tool being the shape of uh, um, see what the official name is for it, the scale tool. This is a tool that lets you scale a layer. It doesn't scale everything, it just scales the layer you're selected on. So we're going to click the NSRE logo, there it is, now we can see the whole thing, and we're going to make it smaller. A couple different ways to do this. One, you can make sure it's linked. This is a link. You can unlink it or link it. That'll keep your um, proportions the same. You go link it, and then you drop it in size. And look, there it goes. It's smaller. All right, when you get it to the size that's reasonable, um, you can then use the Move tool right over here. Move, little arrows. And you can move it where you want. It's still a little too big, so we'll go back to Scale. And now it will have handles because it's smaller. So now we're like, oh, let's make it uh, this size. There we go. Scale. There it is. Now that logo is fits in our background. Okay. So that's the scale tool and the move tool. You don't like it over here? Make sure it's highlighted and move it around. One of the things you'll notice when you're doing a car is that if it's not what you're on, you'll move the wrong thing. I hate it. It's one of my favorite things to hate. You know, I'm always moving the wrong thing. So you go edit, undo, and you can undo forever until you save. Put it right back where it was. Okay. All right. So we've gone over a couple basic tools here. Let's do the rotation tool. Okay. This is my one of my favorite tools. I use it all the time. Whenever you're putting logos on a vehicle, you need to put them on the right side of the car and the left side of the car. So you use the rotation tool. This would be the side that would be correct, and then on the other side of the car, you would then spin it and put it where you need it. I have not been able to get that good that I can put that at 180.00, so guess what I do? I just type it in, and there it is. Rotate, and now it's rotated 180 degrees. If you're gonna put it on the hood, you would use the rotate tool to put it 90 degrees. And then you hit rotate and it finishes it. Now, of course, it's the wrong size. So guess what we do? Go to the scale tool. You got it. And make it fit the size that we're putting it on. And then if it's not where you want it, you move it. Basic tools you're going to use all the time. All right. Scale selection. Ooh, selection tools. These are my favorite and why I like the tool options. Okay, there's different kinds of selection tools. You can square select, you can kind of free select, you can scissor cut select, never used that one before. Fuzzy select, color select. I use these two the most. Select by color and fuzzy select. And I also use the rectangle select when I'm removing something, and I'll show you how to do that. All right, let's do a color select, and let's pick the color white. You gotta be on your layer. If you're on the background layer, you cannot pick these colors. If I try to pick here, it doesn't look like it's doing anything, but it actually picked the entire blue area because I'm highlighted on the background. Okay, let's do select none to get rid of that. We'll go back to the NSRA logo. It's a very, very important thing when you're doing your paints to not have something selected you don't intend to work on. Um, this select none has saved my bacon many, many times. So you would want to do want to use that frequently. All right, let's say, for example, we want to pick out this NSRA logo, okay? It's not quite white. This is white down here, but this isn't quite white. It's close to white. So let's pick our color selection tool, and we'll just grab white and see what it does. Okay, so we selected the white. If you notice, it's not really what we want at all. So you have to learn how to use the tools, okay? So let's go to select none, because that didn't do what we wanted. We're gonna go down here now to this tool options. We're gonna adjust this threshold number. Right now, it's, this number is somewhere between one and 256. So what you're gonna do is we're gonna say, I wanna pick every color, because we're color selecting, um, between the number zero, which is only the one pixel you pick on, that color, and expand it out to more colors. All right, so let's try it now at 148. Well, let's make it nice and even, 150. And we click on that same white. Okay, now you see we picked up all the NSRA logo in the middle, all of the NSRA words, and all of these silver stripes, okay? 
that's still too much, but it at least gets what we wanted. If we wanted just this NSRA logo with the words under it, we have it. We just have more than we want. So now comes the selection fun. Um, what you can do with this now is you can pick what type of select you're going to do. So let's unselect. We're going to switch to the rectangle tool. I told you I'd use this for unselecting things. Okay, and I'm going to unselect everything outside of what I want. So I'm drawing a box. And you can see it does it automatic and quickly for you to see what we're doing. Quite an amazing little set of tools here. You got to be careful not to unselect too much. Unselecting as I go here. And maybe a couple more. Oh, don't go that far. Get one right here. Need one more little one. Okay, now, if you see by the little dotted line, we have selected just the NSRA area. Okay, so that's what you can do with the selection tool and using your options, your tool options. You can pick exactly what you want. Now, let's say we want that to be on the car, but not all the other stuff. So we would create a new layer, call it NSRA lettering, letters. Okay, very, very important that you name things so you can find them. Okay, and then we're going to make this, let's make it, um, oh, how about yellow? And we're going to fill it. Okay, we're going to fill our, use our fill tool. There it is. It's yellow. We're going to fill foreground. And we're going to fill this in. Now, if I were selected down here on the logo, it would fill in that color on the logo itself. But because I created a new layer, and that new layer is selected, when I fill that in, it's only going to fill it in on that layer. And you can kind of see it in there. It's yellow in there. You can barely tell it's there. All right. So now let's go select none. Again, one of my favorite parts. Now we have it written here, NSRA, National Sim Racing Association. And let's take off the background. Okay. Now we have a clear background with just NSRA, National Sim Racing Association in yellow. Now, it's not the direction I want it, but we know how to fix that. We go to the rotation tool, we grab it, we spin it. We tell it we want it 90 degrees, not 89.09. And we rotate it, and boom, there it is. There's our NSRA logo. We grab that out of that other logo. And you can do that with anything, with these color select tools and deselect tools. All right, now, you also notice here, that this is really, really big. So let's try this. Another thing I wanted to show you today. Um, we are going to crop to content. Boom. Okay, now what this does is it takes the entire image that we are working on, the whole thing, the background, everything. If we turn these other things back on, guess what? They are still that size. You have now changed the size of your document to fit right around this. So if this is what you were after by opening up all the pieces you opened, then you have got what you need and now you export it and you make it what you want. Okay, and we'll talk about exporting in just a minute. All right, but you can see here that this is one way to get, um, to extract something out of something else that already exists. All right, let's undo back to the size here. Okay, and we'll actually get rid of that because that actually looks not so good. Um, we'll put our backgrounds in. We'll grab the NSRA logo. We'll spin that back around to where it needs to be, 90 degrees. Rotate, and there you go. Um, all right, so that is selection tool. All right, let's do the same exercise we just did, but now we're going to use fuzzy select. Okay, that was the color selection. This is the fuzzy select. Fuzzy select now lets you do the same thing we just did with colors, but it's only going to do what it can touch. Okay, so if you remember, I have my threshold up around 150. 
on that uh, on the previous one. And I was able to pick inside this S, and it picked all the things that are white on the entire image. Okay, now I'm going to use Fuzzy Select Tool, and it's only going to pick what it can touch. Okay, so there it is. There's your S. Now, if I want to add, if I'm only going to do one, then it'll deselect the one and select the next. And you see the R and the A touch down here at the bottom, so I picked them both up. But I can do that where it only picks one item, replace the current selection with what I'm selecting. Okay, now I got the border and not the lettering. Or I can add and I can put them together. Okay? Because the border touches all that, it picked it all up. So now we go select none to get rid of all that. And we're going to add just. Okay, now I'm. Okay, I got to get the white. Okay, just the white. Okay, all right. So now we have our NSRA letters. What I was doing, and the reason it was picking up the silver is because I was too far into this gray and it picked up across the gray. All right, so now I just have my letters. Let's go ahead and uh, paint those again, but this time we're going to use the pencil tool. Now there's a pencil tool and a paintbrush tool, but to me they do basically the same thing for what I do. Artists will tell you a million times over they're different because you can use all these cool tips and brushes and things on your paintbrush. That's all wonderful and good, but all I want to do is fill in something. So let's fill in something, and we're going to pick the color red. So we're going to pick a nice bold red, and we're going to fill in this NSRA logo with red. But what are we going to do first? We're going to create another layer. NSRA letters 2. And we're going to then select that layer, and then we're going to paint just that layer. Check that out. We're not coloring anything else, just the layer. Now, this pen is pretty small. So guess what? Tool options. Size right here, 29. Let's crank it up to 150. Boom, our job is done. Select none. And we now have a pink and red NSRA logo. If you don't like it, deselect it. It's just a layer. It can be deleted, copied. You can do thousands of things with layers. Okay? So that's the fuzzy select. We also went through don't select. Um, did some of that. Talked a little bit about the pencil and paintbrush. You can use the paintbrush if you want to do this. Let's do it again. Fuzzy select. And we'll pick. We've got our add tool, right? We're going to go here and then here and then here. Doing those same letters, going to make another layer because I'm like that. I love layers. And we're going to paint it. Oh, let's pick uh, baby blue. And now we're going to use the paintbrush to do the same task. Okay, you notice there's edges. You see that, how it's a paintbrush now instead of a hard edge pencil? Me, I want to fill it in so I don't need the paintbrush. With a paintbrush, I always copy it over 100 times to make sure I didn't lose anything. But there it is, blue NSRA, select none. And now you have a blue NSRA layer that you can turn on or off. Okay. Layers, paintbrushes, color selections, fuzzy selections, all kinds of cool stuff. All right. That's pretty basic. Logos. Let's go to logos. What kind of logo are we looking for? I want to do this. Maverick Country Store. Okay, so you look for a logo. And when you're out there looking for a logo, you're gonna you're looking for something to put on your car. So you want to look for images. Okay. You know, I just type in what I want. Maverick Country Store Utah logo, because they're only in Utah. So here's a cool looking one. Oh, this one's really cool. It's got some graphic, you know, like mirror on it and everything else. So we open that up. And we open it up again, because if you open it, you should get a better image. Um, this time we didn't get much of an image that's better, but you right-click, you save your image, and again, you need to make sure you know where you're putting them. This is a Utah logo. So I'll just put in Maverick. I might already even have one in there. Maverick, main, two. Okay. So there's my logo. I found a logo. All right. So let's get rid of the NSRA logo because we already had that one. Now we're going to file. We're going to open it as a layer. Now, 
I'm going to do this wrong first so you can kind of see what it is, and then we'll do it right. All right. So we go to Logos. We put it in the Utah folder. And we're going to find Maverick Main 2 JPEG. Okay. Oh, wait. I wanted a clear background. Uh, I want to put it on my car. My car's yellow. I can't put that on my car. It's yellow because then it'll have a white background. Dang. Okay. So that's a useless logo, right? Wrong. All right. Let's undo the open as a layer. And now we're going to open it. Instead of open it as a layer, we're going to open the exact same logo. It's going to open it in a new window. So here you are, Maverick's uh, Adventures First Stop logo. Now, how do you suppose we're going to take this and make it into a clear background? We're going to first go to Layers. We're going to go to Transparency. We're going to have to add this alpha channel. Now, sometimes when you go to do this Add Alpha Channel, it's already there. So if that's the case, you don't have to add it. But if it's not, and it's highlighted white like that, you have to click Add Alpha Channel. That makes it so you can make things transparent. All right, and now we're going to go to our Color Select tool, and we're going to pick white. Now, see how it's got that little X on there, that little, little um, can't do it thing? Even though we're on the image, we're selected on it, it should be able to do it. Well, we have not select right now. Okay, subtract. You can't subtract if you don't have anything. So add. You just got to move that over, and you click white. Okay. Picked up kind of a weird pattern here. There's more here than we wanted. So let's undo that. And now let's change this threshold number until we get what we want. Let's try 87. Ooh, there it is. That was actually a really good guess. Now we have the white and all the different shades of white, but it didn't cut into any of the other coloring. Okay. So now we have selected the white. And if we have the transparency layer turned on, you go to Edit and Clear, and now you have a transparent background. Select None, and there's your logo. All right, so you can either save this logo over the top of the other one. You can drag it from here into the other image. Um, we'll do a couple different things here. But first, because it's big, it's bigger than what I want. So let's do my favorite crop to content, and now it's just the right size. So now I can go File, and it'll even give you the option to overwriting the one you had. Just stick it right where it was. And you just export it out. And now that image is a transparent, smaller image of what we want. So let's close this, and we'll give it a shot. We'll try it out. So now we're in here. We're going to go to File. We're going to open as a layer this time, like we we're supposed to. We're going to grab that Maverick 2 logo. We're going to open it, and it didn't work. So why didn't it work? Very good question. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I know why. Oh, what a key mistake we made. Let's go back to open. Let's open our logo one more time. And notice it's white again because we saved it as a JPEG image. JPEG images do not have transparent backgrounds. So back to the exercise. We select with the color. We pick our add. We pick the white. We then remove the white because it should already have the other piece in it. Maybe, maybe not. We'll find out. Clear. It does not. So layer, transparency, add alpha channel, edit, clear, select, none, file, export as. All right. See how it says JPEG up here? That's what killed us. So we're going to take this down and let it say PNG. And we're also going to go down here just to make sure and pick that we're exporting as a PNG image. Okay, that is select file type. PNG images can have transparent backgrounds. JPEG images cannot. So as you're looking for logos on the Internet, you need to know that you're looking for PNGs if possible. If not, guess what? You can make your own. So now we export it. We turn the export button, let it go, and it is now officially a JPEG image or a PNG image. We go to File, Open as a Layer. Now we find the one that is a PNG, okay? And you can even tell right here, it's logo. This one has a white background, that one does not. Open, bingo, there's your logo. Now we didn't really take too much time making that one perfect. As you make this bigger, you'll see that it's not quite exact, so we probably could have used the selection tool 
done a little bit more to it, made some better decisions. Um, but if it's going to be really small in your car, that's fine. You've got enough. But you can see that we could have gone in and done some more selecting and made it even better because it's a little rough. All right, logos. Um, what else we got? Opening, oh, iRacing. Hey, cool. Let's go. Let's close these. Don't really care about Maverick, to be honest. Uh, file, open. And where do we have things? We have them organized on my thumb drive. We're going to go to vehicles, and we're going to pick a Ferrari. Okay, so when you get a download a file from iRacing, you're going to download it as a PSD file, right? This is the format it's going to be in. And you say, but Ron, how do you do that? Well, let's go look. We go to iRacing.com. We sign in. Don't copy my password. And we go to paint. All right, so now we're in the paint section. And we can make this a little bigger. And we pick a car. Pick a car, any car, download car template. Okay, there's your PSD file right there. So you hit download car template. I already have this one, so I'm not going to do that one. Let's do the Cadillac. Okay, so download car template. And it's not a logo. It's a vehicle. Don't have the Cadillac. So make a new folder. And this is called the Cadillac CTS. V. Okay. Don't change names. Don't worry about it. Just save it. It's a zip file. It'll download. Once it's downloaded, you can pretty much get rid of the iRacing and go to your Vehicles tab. And now you should have Cadillac, and you do. Wait, there's nothing there because it can't open a zip file. Okay. All right. So let's go to where our drive is. Go to Vehicles, go to Cadillac, there's our zip file, just open it up. There's the PSD file we want. So I just copy it, go back a layer, drop it, and it'll unzip it and drop it in the folder for you. All right, so now we have a PSD file in that folder, not just a zip file, and there it is. So now we can open that file. And it will give you, you have to convert it, and that will give you your Cadillac image. Okay? This is a really old one. It doesn't have very many things on it at all. But it has the basic stuff. All right. I'm not going to go through painting the car right now, um, but let's pick, right now it's picked, um, it's got layer one down here, which is the default paint of that car. Let's say, for example, you, that's what you want, um, that, that's the, that that's the paint you want. They saved a, they saved a nice little line in there for us. Um, so at that point, once you get this where you want it, once you have all your work done and you don't mind having the copyright in the way, have that show up on the back of your car, um, then you can export it. Okay, I'm just going to go over opening. We opened the PSD file. You have to convert it, and it opens it, and all your layers are here. You can see how important layers are now. Um, and there's quite a few. Once you get down into it, there's lots and lots of things going on. And you'll even be creating a bunch more. But right now, I want you to know to be organized. Okay, You can view, you can zoom, you can put that in the screen so you can see the whole thing. Um, all these little things you can turn on and off. Um, a lot of that's going to come in with, uh, like, the decals. You can turn those on and off. You change your pit box color. That's this little box down here. And the and the color change graphics. So you can have white, white Cadillac Pirelli logos or black Cadillac Pirelli logos, depending on your base color. Um, there's lots of different things you'll be able to do, and we'll get into that as we start painting cars. So... How do I get this on my car? Um, you're going to export it. The way you put it up into trading paints or on a car is you export as, and you need to make it a TGA file or a Targa file. 
that's the file type that is read by the other um, the other programs, the Targa file. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and export this thing as a Targa file. I put it in my vehicle's Cadillac folder, so it's right where I want it. You hit export. You have to do it bottom left. I don't know why bottom left, but that's what you do. And now it's exported. So now, if I were to close this PSD file, and I were to open my Targa file, it's the same image, but all my layers are gone. Okay? This is the image that Trading Paints or iRacing will read as it loads your car. If you're using uh, SIM stamp numbers, it'll put the number right in here for you. If you're not, then you have to paint your own numbers in the car. All right. Pretty basic on opening and closing car files and using the view zoom uh, sections. Okay, let's go back to our document. We'll do the PSD file this time. And again, we haven't saved it, so we have to convert it again. It's still a PSD. PSD is the Adobe equivalent of this very low-cost program we're using today. Get rid of that guideline. You can use guidelines if you want. They're really cool. You can use them. You can put a bunch of them out there. They might help you uh, line things up, um, but I don't use them a lot. I eyeball a lot of things because I'm not a perfectionist. All right, layers. Um, real quick because we're burning time here. We're already after over 30 minutes. Um, you'll see there are lots and lots of layers, and everything you do with layers, um, like if you want to turn on the wire mask to see where things are, you can turn them on and off, okay? You can turn on and off your layers as you go. Um, one of the cool things about this one is that everything in iRacing, they make different types of paint you can do. So if you don't like that one, you can try that one or the next one. Just turn them off in order, and you'll take a look at all the different pre-mades that they have. And in the next video, we're going to go over how to change all these and make them what you want. I'm not going to go into creating custom graphics. I'm going to take these basic designs that they have on here and show you how to make them look, make them into a nice looking car with the colors you want, um, and uh, and have it just, you know, that that be your unique paint. And you can use the same pattern as a lot of other people. You'll see a lot of times out there racing that a lot of people have the same pattern, but the colors are different. And the car looks different. That's uh, pretty much how you do it. All right, uh, we have one more tool we want to talk about, and that is the path tool. Okay, this tool right here. This is called the path tool, all right? And I'm going to go back to a basic image, and we're going to fill it in with a darker color because I really don't like that white. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go to this path tool. Now, the path tool is a pretty unique pretty unique tool. Um, ah, undo that. And undo add the path. Okay. So let's say you want to make a shape or a design. You can do it with the path tool. Now this might not be the design you want. Never close your path tools. It won't let you. Just go real close to it. All right. But let's say now you want to make this curved. And you want to make this curved. And you want to make this curve that way. And you want to make that kind of rounded. This is your path tool. And you're just kind of making a shape with this tool. Um, it's quite an interesting tool to work with. That's a pretty abstract shape. So if you needed to make a shape that would fit your car, um, this is how you would do it. You would make some abstract shape that would fit the design or contour of your car. Now, once you get it close, this is the important part about path tools. You can sit here and play with these little handles, change the shape, size, the design. Once you get it close, you go back and select that last one. By the way, you can select these. You can delete these. Um, ah, undo. You can delete these by 
holding down one of the one of the letters on the keyboard will let you delete that, but I don't know what it is. Edit, undo, add stroke. Um, thought it was control, but it's not. Shift, it is also not. But you can delete them and change them, but Path Tool is pretty easy to make. You can redo them too. But once you get this done, you highlight the last one, you hit Shift V, and it makes a shape out of that. Okay, and then what are we going to do? We're going to create a new layer. And we're going to make that abstract one. And now we have an abstract layer here, but there's nothing in it yet. Don't unselect it yet. Fill it first or do something with it first. You can paint it. You can pencil it. Pick a color. You can draw in it. Do whatever you want to it. Okay, and once you get it where you want it, then you can select none because now it's a layer. Okay? All right. Adding a layer with path tools. That's the last thing I have on my list. We're 40 minutes in. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, next video is going to be first car with iRacing patterns. We're going to go through that Cadillac. We're going to make ourselves a smoking hot Cadillac. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Please like below. Subscribe if you like my videos. This is my first one, so it's probably terrible anyway. But hey, throw me some comments. Let me know what you think, good, bad, otherwise. And uh, this is Ron with Wizard Racing. Have a great day.